laptops are being banned from some classrooms in the United States banned which seems weird, doesn't it? It comes as research shows people don't absorb as much information on an electronic device as reading words printed on paper. How old-fashioned and hokey, but it could be good for us. It's been found reading on screen encourages skimming, whereas reading hard copy, a book or a page, allows people to deep read, whatever that is. Scientist Michelle Dickinson is here to explain, joins me now. How are you, Michelle? I'm good, thanks, Paul. Just before we talk about this, because I've become slightly obsessed with the idea of living for a great deal longer than otherwise I normally would. Yeah. Um, Because there seems to be in science, there seems to be a lot of different science meeting now with the view that life can be perhaps not forever, but extended out by maybe hundreds of years. Yeah, sure. Would you want to, though? (sighs) What would you do with that time? Yes, I would. I wouldn't want to live forever. Okay. But um, I would like to live for longer than most people. Okay. Um, because I think I've got so much to contribute, Michelle. Yes. Do you um, and take yourself. You've you've got a lot to contribute. You've already contributed a lot. I'm I'm keeping my powder dry, if you know what I mean. <laughs> um, but do you get the same feeling? I mean, as you look at the, because you read the scientific reports yeah. firsthand. So I mean, it's it's not just fixing one thing, right? There's a whole bunch of stuff. It's wear and tear of our joints. It's extending, um, you know, getting mitochondria to to do things differently, reducing free radical degradation, and so there's. Each of the research you, reports you're reading are one little piece of but that. But some of the things will do m- multiples of those, won't they? Yeah. Because if you can repair the structure that repairs itself, then it will repair those other so, things. So there is evidence. Actually, there's a study this week about a new um, treatment for diabetics, actually, that has been shown to prolong age, and they're going to do clinical trials on it now. So things we're treating and drugs we're using to treat other things we're finding as an offset, we weren't studying Could it, but potentially. People, right? So putting them all together, but really? Would you want to live forever? No, but I do. let's worry about that problem once we've now the, now the problem. Do you but know what I mean? Let's worry about that. Already. I mean, imagine how are you going to fund it? Well, I'm, I'll be all right. Okay. Um, <laughs> I don't know about these other people who I'll be living with. I'll just have to be well armed uh, because the problem is, of course, overpopulation is one of the big popula- massive. problems. Massive. Well, we've already got a massive problem with how we're using our land and how we're housing people versus agriculture. And I just, you know. But then some problems would be less, like you say, Kiwi Saver, but saving for retirement wouldn't be such a big problem because I suppose people just wouldn't need to retire like they do now. But so, then who wants to work for hundreds of years? Exactly. Exactly. And also, you know, you might be able to keep your body alive for a certain period of time, but what are you going to do if your memory goes or, you know? So. Well, it won't because it'll be rejuvenating, won't it? It'll be fine. But we will have to start putting people down. Oh, it'll be terrible. It'll be a terrible mess. Mess in the streets. All right. The executive producer said in my ear, should we talk about the thing we were actually going to talk about? Let's do that. What do you reckon? I think so. Yeah. All right. Let's, let's <laughs> give it a go. Um, so this, this new research has shown that what they call non-linear yeah. Um, reading. The, the comprehension just won't be there. So, not the comprehension. Well, so see, I'm going to argue this because I believe laptops should not be banned from classrooms. I teach in classrooms. I love it when my students have laptops because I think actually they're able to get information straight away. So, if I yeah. say something in the front of a class, they don't understand it. They can re- research that while I'm speaking about it. Now, this data, what they did is they did an immediate recall test. Mm-hmm. So, they gave a lecture out. They got some students to write by hand, some students to write using their laptop. If you write with your laptop, you can get more words down, so you're actually just annotating. If you write by hand, it's slower, so what you do is you think about the sentence and you write down. Because you're writing at the same speed you're thinking rather than writing faster than you're thinking. And on an instant recall, they said, yes, the students who wrote by hand did recall information faster and better, but actually over a long period of time, the students who then went back and read their notes had the same results. So this is slightly skewed data. But didn't they also survey um, those that had read the same thing either on a screen versus reading it in hard copy? They did, but what they read was a short mystery novel Mm -hmm. and what they found is that um, when they scan your brain with an MRI scanner when you're reading, Reading a hard book doesn't just mean that your brain is um, looking at the words, but also the sense of touch and the mapping, so you actually know where you are in the book. So the only difference between the people who read online and um, on a traditional book was that they were able to map the plot better, mm. but recall the same amount of information. They knew the storyline. And so the question is, how much depth do we need in what we're reading, seeing that we're now getting about five times more information than we did in the 1980s. So, actually so, what, we're so very the issue broad. is then, are we getting too much information? I mean, is it a problem when you're sitting next to a laptop, you're giving a lecture, yeah. and the person's thinking, oh, what, what, did, what did Michelle really mean? Clickety, click, click, click. Right. You can't concentrate. So you're still giving a lecture, which the person's now tuned out of. So as an educator, I actually don't believe in just filling kids' brains with stuff. I believe in lighting a fire, right? So my lecture should not be about, I'm here talking to you. Oh, this is all it very should... holistic. <laughs> lighting it's about a fire. lighting fires and getting 
and getting the students to be passionate and, and go away and find their own resources on it. So I don't believe, I believe giving people laptops and their excuse was he was afraid if they had laptops they would be facebooking in class mm. now my opinion well, that's is a different thing altogether of course, if you're a poor it? educator and you're not you know inspiring your kids well they are facebooking but i yeah. am teaching in classrooms where kids or are online, online poker something like that all of those things um, right i i once spoke to someone who who uh, a lecturer and this was only maybe a year ago and he's perhaps the last person in the world to still use overhead projectors oh no they still and do and he it. said yeah. that he did that because he felt that that technology mm. actually performed at the same speed as the people he was trying to teach and at his speed as well, so that it actually the technology fitted in with the lecture. You tend to teach in the way that you learn, OK? So our digital natives, the kids that are growing up now, their brains can process a lot more information than, yep. than us older people realise and, yep. and you only know what you know. So I actually think we need to allow our students to have a technology that they're comfortable with and if that's electronic technology, then, then they're the best person, especially in tertiary, which is what this study was about. Students at university, they, they're there not because they're forced to, they're there to get an education. If they choose yeah. to Facebook in class, that's up to them, but the majority of them are good students. Brilliant, Michelle. And if you could just nut out this whole living forever business too. And, um, you, know, you know when I nut it out, I'm taking it first. Right? Yeah. All right, well, we'll, we'll take it together. Um, <laughs> all right, Michelle Dickinson, uh, nanotech scientist. So I've got the right person in my camp, if you know what I mean.